The news at noon starts right now. The wait nearly over for people who want to have an early say in this year's presidential election. Early voting begins tomorrow morning. And as Katrina Weber shows us, quite a few people have already made the choice to take part. The usual matchups on the court here are giving way to showdowns on the ballot. The AT&T Center is all socially distanced and ready to go. One of dozens of early voting sites opening tomorrow in Bear County. We always vote early and we're going to vote early this year as well. Yes, absolutely. I've looked up my closest uh, precinct to go vote near work so that I can get it done ahead of election day. These people, like many voters, are ready to make their choices early, hoping to avoid the crowds. They say there's a lot riding on this election. There is a lot at stake, and I definitely want to be sure that I'm participating. You never know what's going to come up on the last day. You know, something, some emergency comes up or something, and then you're sidelined. It's going to be election day for me. Regardless of which candidates they support and when they plan to cast their ballots, most of the people who we spoke with said this may be the most important decision they've made to get out and vote. Because of the large number of registered voters, the governor has extended the dates for early voting in Texas, now going through October 30th. There also are also some weekend and late night hours, some days as late as 10 p.m. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Less than half of registered voters here in Texas are confident Americans will trust the results of the presidential election. According to the latest University of Texas Texas Tribune poll, the survey shows 47% of Americans will trust the results, while 44% say they're not confident. 39% of Republican voters in Texas say they'll trust the results of the presidential election, opposed to the 45% for Texas Democratic voters. Most of the respondents don't think the winner will be announced on Election Day, while 26% of Texas voters do think the winner will be announced on November 3rd. And you can read more about this poll and the concerns Texas voters have about voting and the 2020 election right now on KSET.com. Well, early voting means the Bear County Elections Office is very busy right now. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan held a press conference at 10 o'clock this morning to show how preparations are going. Early voting was extended across the state this year due to the pandemic. Instead of two weeks of early voting, voters will get three weeks. Election Day is November 3rd, and for everything you need to know about voting, just head to KSAT.com. And now the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in San Antonio. Metro Health reporting 90 new cases and no new deaths. However, a backlog of 27 deaths from dates ranging between June 21st and September 24th were added to the total count. 192 patients are in local hospitals with 81 in intensive care and 39 on ventilators. Meanwhile, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is in great need of blood donations right now. It's hosting blood drives around the city this week to get help meeting their goal. There's a blood drive at Santicos Entertainment Casablanca today and tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's located in the 11,000 block of Alamo Ranch Parkway. If you donate at this blood drive, you will receive a free movie ticket. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center also hosting two more blood drives this week, one at NISD Paul Taylor Fieldhouse, on Wednesday and Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. and another on Thursday at the Holiday Inn in Stone Oak. That one from 11 to 4. You can find all this information on how to register right now at KSAT.com. The city of San Antonio expanding free COVID-19 testing to asymptomatic people starting tomorrow. The testing will be done on a first come first serve basis. Testing sites accepting people showing no COVID-19 symptoms are the Cuellar Community Center and Ramirez Community Center. The two locations will be open from 10 a.m. until 2 in the afternoon. No appointment is required. And you can find more information about those testing sites on our website and the city's website. And today, President Donald Trump's first campaign event outside of Washington, D.C., since he announced he tested positive for COVID-19 10 days ago. Joe Biden, meanwhile, continues to slam the administration's response to the pandemic while questions linger about the president's COVID diagnosis. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. With just 22 days until the election, President Trump heading back on the campaign trail, kicking off a busy week of rallies, declaring himself completely cured after his doctor announced he is no longer at risk of spreading COVID-19, telling Fox News. I've been tested totally negative. But there's been little medical evidence to back up the president's claim. In fact, White House Dr. Sean Conley's latest letter, just 10 lines long, says nothing about the president testing negative. Instead, Dr. Conley says President Trump is 
recovering and is no longer considered contagious. You should let us know if the, if the president has tested positive or negative. Despite few details being provided about the president's health and many unknowns about a virus that is still new, Trump asking Americans to take his word. It looks like I'm immune for, I don't know, maybe a long time or maybe... A short time. It could be a lifetime. Nobody really knows, but I'm immune. His opponent, Joe Biden, calling that sort of talk irresponsible. His reckless personal conduct since his diagnosis. The destabilizing effect it's having on our government is unconscionable. This, while Trump's handling of the virus, continues to take a hit with voters. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows the majority of registered voters distrust what President Trump says about the virus, and two-thirds say he failed to take appropriate precautions. The Trump campaign also facing pressure for a new political ad falsely suggesting Dr. Anthony Fauci was praising the president's pandemic response. I can't imagine that any Anybody could be doing more. But the comment was made in March and was about the government response as a whole when little was known about the virus. Fauci telling ABC News he has never publicly endorsed a candidate, adding those comments were taken out of context and used without his permission. And now both candidates hit the campaign trail here in the final stretch. Today, Joe Biden stumping in Cincinnati and Toledo, while President Trump speaks to supporters in the critical battleground state of Florida. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Well, although today is Columbus Day nationally, the state of Texas does not observe it. Instead, today is Indigenous Peoples Day in San Antonio and Houston. And here in the Alamo City, activists are planning a downtown march supporting human rights and indigenous dignity. Marchers will gather at Columbus Park at 2 o'clock this afternoon. That after the city took down a statue of Christopher Columbus. Activists had called for the removal due to Columbus's history of slavery and oppression of indigenous people. So to come this half hour, Dak Prescott now recovering from ankle surgery while Andy Dalton takes over for the Cowboys. And how a local woman overcame her fears and turned a hobby into a way to help others. This week's on What's Up South Texas, we featured a San Antonio woman who has detected, who has dedicated the last few years mastering the craft of sewing in order to make clothes for children in need at different charities. 40-year-old Kathleen Gamble started sewing after she took classes in 2014. She said it took her a while to learn because she was treated like she had a learning disability, even though she did not. She says the warmth and comfort of her grandfather made her feel confident enough to pick up a new craft. You know, when I was going through that, I don't know if I'm smart, so I'm going to assume I'm, I'm, something's wrong with me. He, 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 he saw, he looked past that. He didn't treat me like I was weird. After her grandfather passed away, she began to convert her problems into positivity to help other people. So far, she has sewn at least 600 different outfits for children at various charities. To read more about her story and others featured on What's Up South Texas, visit our website at ksat.com. Got some talent tent sewing. She, she does. And that's almost a lost art, isn't it? It is. I should do that for my Lost Art series. Yeah. Wow. Justin always gives me ideas for those. Yeah, man. Old school. I like the old <laughs> school stuff. That's cool. Hey, look outside. We got a front coming through. It's actually through now. We've got some northerly winds kicking in. It's not all that much cooler, but we are going to see some drier air headed our way today and tomorrow. The aquifer down half a foot to 660.3. We really need some rain. There's not a lot in the forecast, I must say. And looking at the pollen count, mold, ragweed, pigweed, all in the low category. Stronger front later this week. I think you're going to like the forecast. We'll have a look at it coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. At Calaveras aren't just the painted skulls you see every year. Calaveras can be written, and they are humorous and a poetic Day of the Dead tradition. A calavera is written about someone who's still alive. To poke fun or to bring somebody down, 
in the form of a pun or satirical piece of poetry. And it is usually written about someone who is prominent either in politics, in sports, in entertainment. Generally, they all die in the calavera. Not in reality, but figuratively. Calaveras are not written about people who are already dead, and that's because a person cannot defend themselves. It's cowardly, I think, to make fun of someone who has already died. So to write a good calavera, you strip that person down to the very essence. You pick out that quality that you either like or dislike, and then you write it in a form that makes fun of it, and that makes that person come alive for you and I. Should I start writing poems about your qualities, David? Yeah, short poem. <laughs> take long. I don't know, it might take you a few minutes. Take us something. I'll, I'll say nicer <laughs> things about Justin in a poem if he gives us a cold front. Ooh, wow, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Pressure's uh, on. Listen, I, I think I can deliver on this. Uh, oh, you're lucky week. then. I know. Uh, it, it's looking today. a lot better. <laughs> it's looking a lot better. Hey, I want to show you guys the time lapse from this morning. Well, look at this. Okay, so we have the clouds. Watch them just reverse course right there. Did you see it? Uh, that was the front coming through. We've got the northerly wind kicking in. Uh, it's not all that much cooler outside. Now it's uh, cooler than it was yesterday. We're going to see cooler temperatures today, but still fairly warm. 88 degrees. Dew point is at 68. We're waiting on that number to drop off, and it will, but it's going to take until the afternoon probably for that to happen. You look at the dew points right now, still in the 60s, but that dry air is just off to our north. This is lagging behind the front a little bit. Dew points in the 30s and 40s up there around Waco and Abilene and Dallas. A little closer look here. Yeah, we still have 60s and 70s, but Kerrville. Dew point now at 44, Rock Springs at 45, dry air is on our doorstep. It will be here this afternoon. And I think the temperatures may level off just a little bit, just because we are getting some slightly cooler air coming in behind this front. And as we fast forward in time here, this is around midnight, dew points really do drop off here around San Antonio, and that's going to allow for some cool temperatures tomorrow morning. Wind gusts, yeah, they're picking up a little bit. We saw some pretty good northerly winds with this front. Right now, a gust at 16 at Fredericksburg, but that's about all we got. And when we're talking about the gusts, eh, 14, 15 miles per hour, maybe a gust up to 20 miles per hour through the afternoon. And then the winds will fall off as well. Temperature wise, 82 in Comfort, 83 Kerrville, a little bit cooler up there. 89 Castroville, 85 Stinson, 87 in Randolph. And you're in the mid 80s out in Del Rio, 85 Kennedy, 87 Couture. You're still out ahead of the front, or at least that front's just now working through some of our southern counties. And we can see it very nicely here on the visible satellite picture. A few clouds trying to work through Bear County. We've also got a few clouds right on the front uh, farther to the south. But all in all, mostly sunny day. Uh, that's what we're expecting this afternoon. More clouds along the front as you get up towards Memphis and uh, towards the east, but not a lot of rain. And now we've gone 20 days consecutive. Now today would make 21 without rainfall here at San Antonio International Airport. And that streak is good enough for second place. Uh, just behind our streak that we have from June 27th to July 25th. And it's not looking great, i got to tell you, down the line for rain chances, even with this next front that we got headed our way. There is a little bit of activity out in the Atlantic. There are some indications that this could develop 30% chance of development as it moves off to the west. Uh, thankfully, we, we've at least got a little bit of break here, but uh, this need to be watched as we go uh, forward in times. But that's, uh, that's all we have in the tropics right now. So as we get into tomorrow, temperatures will be in the upper 80s, mostly sunny and dry. Humidity tries to return some on Wednesday, and it will be warm. We're thinking low 90s for highs on Wednesday, probably our hottest day. Thursday is a transition day. We'll get the front coming through. It'll get windy. Northerly winds kick in, and then look at the high temperature on Friday, 74. That's what we're talking about. That's fall weather. That's what we need around here. It'd be nice if this front would come with some rain. It does not, but at least it cools us down some. It will be windy during the day on Friday, too. We should pass that along. 87 degrees, 2 o'clock today. 88 by 4 o'clock. We'll be up around 89. We're already in the upper 80s, so again, temperatures should level out some. And then we'll go 88 tomorrow, lower humidity. 92 Wednesday. 88 on Thursday, there's a slight chance of a shower generally south of San Antonio Thursday night into Friday, but it's a low chance. Windy on Friday and the weekend, 48 to start Saturday, Woo! 579. I'm liking that. Got start, excited for a second, I'm sorry. Start writing, <laughs> let's start writing our positive poems. Lost my mind. <laughs>
Good job, Justin. Thank you. He took a bow. You guys didn't get to see it, but it was lovely. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we've got an update on Dak Prescott coming up in just a few minutes. And the Texans break their losing streak next. Football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. You are looking at a photo of Dak Prescott and his brother from Dak's hospital room last night. Dak had surgery on his right ankle after suffering that dislocation and compound fracture during yesterday's game. According to Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, it all went well and Dak should be out of the hospital today. It's good to see smiles from the hospital room in Dallas after what he's been through. Before the injury, the Cowboys got off to a slow start like usual, hosting the Giants. First quarter, Dak Prescott's pass is intercepted by Kyler Frackwell, and he follows the convey of blockers into the end zone. Dallas once again trails by double digits. They're down 14 to 3. Really bad Cowboys defense made a really good play, though. Demarcus Lawrence drills quarterback Daniel Jones. Ball pops free. It turns into an Anthony Brown scoop and score. 29 yards to 17 all. Then just before the half, a little trickery with 20 seconds left in the half. Prescott to Elliott. Lateral back to Cedric Wilson. And look, there's Dak down there playing receiver. That's a touchdown. The first team touchdown of Dak's career. Dallas is up 24-20 at the break. Second half, Dallas up 24-23 driving. The unthinkable happens. Prescott scrambles. He's taken down. His ankle gets twisted underneath him. He's carted off the field in tears. He acknowledges the crowd. That was the injury that put him in the hospital last night. Cowboys finish that drive off. Ezekiel Elliott takes the handoff, powers his way through the defense. 12-yard touchdown. Dallas up 31-23. Giants score the next 10 points to retake the lead. This time it's Devonta Freeman from four yards out. They go on and convert the that and it's 34-31 but Dallas ties it up and on a field goal and they get the ball back with a chance to win the game under 30 seconds to play backup quarterback Andy Dalton up for Michael Gallup brings it down stays in bounds 38 yards and that sets up this Greg Zerline game winner 34 yards out Cowboys win it 37-34 Dallas now two and three inside the Cowboys locker room they were telling how tough it was to get that victory knowing their teammate had to go to the hospital with that ankle injury. One thing that you've seen with this team is there's no flinch. And we've played all the way to the end in every single game. And, I mean, that's what you love about it. Everybody's playing for each other. And, uh, you know, today we were able to find a way to win. I know we won, but it just, it just sucks to, to lose Dak, our, our leader. Um, and uh, I was talking to the guys this uh, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take all of us to uh, fill that void that uh, we're going to be missing from four. And uh, we just got to go out there and um, play for him. I know Dak's a fighter. Uh, we came in together. Um, we came in together as rookies and, and, and built a great relationship. And one thing I know about him, he's going to fight. So um, just looking forward to, to hearing, hearing his voice. Got to hear him. All right, once again, Dak expected to be released from the hospital sometime today. Cardinals at the Cowboys next Monday night. That's a 7-15 kickoff at AT&T Center. Proof that sometimes change is good. Bill O'Brien fired as Texans coach. Then Romeo Cornell takes over, and the Texans pull off their first win of the season. Take it on the Jaguars yesterday, second quarter, 3-0. Houston with Gardner Minshew finds Keelan Cole, 13-yard touchdown, 7-3 Jacksonville. Texans respond to Sean Watson, finds a wide open Darren Fells. He takes off. That's 44 yards, and that's a touchdown for Houston. Texans lead 10-7 at the half, fourth quarter. Texans up 13-7. Watson finds Will Fuller. Where's Will? There he is. Oh, nice grab. Gets back up. Scores 20-7. Jagged after missing two field goals already. Go for it on fourth and goal. Minshew finds Colin Johnson. That's a touchdown. Jackson only down by six, but Romeo goes for it on fourth down. Watson to Brandon Crooks. That's a 28-yard touchdown on a fourth down play. 359 yards, passing three TDs for Deshaun. Brandon Crooks had 161 yards receiving. Texas defense wrapped up things with four sacks. And there's your final, 30-14 to 14. Houston. Now one and four next week. The Texans are at the Titans for a noon kickoff in Nissan Stadium. So they're coming off with a win. Hey, you know, many places are seeking spikes in COVID-19 cases. What the UK is doing to keep its second wave to a minimum. Plus, Apple's expected to release new iPhones when you can get your hands on one. That's next. And washing machines designed to freshen up your laundry but sometimes a front load washer can smell far more terrible after a full load. Coming up today at five, 12 on your size Maryland mornings with a few simple ways to incur your smelly washing machine woes without breaking the bank and buying a new appliance.
All eyes on Capitol Hill right now as Republicans hope to finish Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation hearings. ABC's Faith Abube shares the latest involving her nomination to the nation's highest court. A bitter political battle underway on Capitol Hill as Senate Democrats and Republicans clash on whether this Supreme Court confirmation hearing for Judge Amy Coney Barrett should even be happening with voters already casting ballots in the presidential election. What will happen is that my Democratic colleagues will say this has never been done and they're right in this regard. Nobody's, I think, has ever been confirmed in election year past July. All I can say is that I feel that we're doing this constitutionally. For the next few hours, each of the 22 members of the committee will have up to 10 minutes for their opening remarks. The nominee herself taking center stage later this afternoon. According to a copy of her opening statement obtained by ABC News, Barrett will talk about her family, her faith, and how her judicial philosophy mirrors that of her mentor, the late Justice Antonin Scalia. Barrett writing, quote, courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. Democrats, including vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, sure to grill Barrett on the Affordable Care Act, a case scheduled before the court just a week after the November election. She'll also be pressed on her position on Roe v. Wade and asked to pledge to recuse herself from any case related to the presidential election. The stakes are extraordinarily high for the American people both in the short term and for decades to come. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows 52 percent of registered voters want the winner of the presidential election to pick the Supreme Court nominee to replace Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But Republicans hope to complete the confirmation process and have Barrett on the court a week before Election Day. Democrats still vowing to slow down the process. When the actual vote occurs in committee and on the floor, Democrats will not be, not supply the quorum. This is going to be a long, contentious week. Senators are expected to start grilling Judge Barrett tomorrow. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. A federal judge has upheld a state court agreement that extends the deadline for counting absentee ballots in Minnesota by seven days. U.S. District Judge Nancy Brazell ruled that Sunday night that the plaintiffs in the case don't have standing and deny their motion for a preliminary injunction. Democratic Secretary of State Steve Simon agreed to extend the ballot deadline after a citizens' rights group cited voter safety concerns due to the coronavirus. Republicans argued the extension violates federal law that sets November 3rd as Election Day. Attorneys for the state and blocking the extension would create confusion. Overseas, a second wave of the coronavirus has struck Europe. Now the continent is struggling to cope right before flu season begins. Over the weekend, a record 100,000 new daily cases were reported for the first time. Spain has declared a state of emergency for Madrid. Italy made masks mandatory, even outdoors. And Britain braced for a new COVID alert system that will put the north of England under a strict new lockdown. We now have more patients in hospital with COVID-19 than we did before the government announced restrictions of March the 23rd in the spring. Scientists say rates of new infections, while much higher than the first wave in spring, cannot be compared because testing has now increased so much. The Czech Republic currently has the worst per capita infection rate in Europe after experts say a June farewell COVID party in Prague caused a surge in cases. The winners for the Nobel Prize in Economics were announced in Stockholm today. Americans Paul Milgram and Robert Wilson won the award for improvements to auction theory and inventions of new auction formats. The Nobel Committee says the men's discoveries have, quote, benefited sellers, buyers and taxpayers around the world. Back here closer to home, the San Antonio Zoo is offering $8 admission for all locals today. You can enjoy the outdoors and reconnect with nature until 4 o'clock this afternoon. The discount is the zoo's way of showing gratitude for the people of San Antonio. You can buy tickets at the front gate with proof of re residency. If you can't make it out today, don't worry. There's a complete list of locals days on the zoo's website, sazoo.org. Outside with live cam, this is what we call a transition week. We start off in the 90s on Sunday, and by the end of the week, ooh, kind of down to the 70s, I guess, huh? Happy transition. Ooh, happy yeah. Transition. We'll, we'll take transitions when it's, uh, you know, in the upper 90s over the weekend. It was so hot. Uh, we are going to get a little bit of a cool down today and then a bigger one later this week. I want to show you visibility first. Why are we showing visibility? There's no fog out there, but 
There is a little bit of dust in the air. This front is kicking up some dust. Sort of a secondary push here that we're about to get here in San Antonio. You see up there around Kerrville and Austin visibility down just a little bit. So if you notice a little bit of dust in the air, that's why it's with this front and it's got some gusty winds with it. Uh, we noticed an initial wind shift a little bit earlier this morning. Here's sort of the secondary push and this is bringing the drier air and those gusty winds with it. Right now, temperatures are still plenty warm. 88 degrees at the airport, 90 at Port SA, and it looks like we may briefly hit 90 before temperatures sort of level out a little bit. 83 Comfort, 83 Kerrville, 87 right now in Bandera. Here's how the forecast looks today. We'll call for temperatures in the upper 80s again. They may dip or at least hold steady through the afternoon, and then we'll see them fall off tonight. We'll have clear skies, winds will lighten up a little bit, and that should allow for some cool temperatures tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about that second front, though. This one's a good one coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, Jeff, thank you. Still ahead, Apple joining the 5G revolution in a big way. Details on when its new line of iPhones are going to be unveiled. And you won't believe this. A woman in Scotland does so many tattoos of Eminem's face on her body. She's earned a Guinness World Record. What started her love affair with the rapper is still ahead in the spotlight. And Microsoft employees may be working <laughs> from home for good. Details on the tech giant's new hybrid model after the break. You almost didn't make it. Oh, man. I, yeah, okay. Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar. Microsoft now allowing more employees to work from home amid the pandemic. The tech giant announcing a new hybrid model allowing for greater employee flexibility once U.S. offices reopen. New guidance will enable employees to either work from home for less than 50% of their work week or choose to work remotely indefinitely. And just six months after making its debut, Jeffrey Katzenberg is looking for a long-term owner for his short-form video app, Quibi. And so far, no one's interested. According to the information, Katzenberg has approached executives at Apple, Warner Media, and Facebook, and all three companies turned down the pitch. And cloud company Twilio is reportedly looking to purchase customer data startup segment for about $3 billion. According to Forbes, the deal is currently in the works and could be announced as early as today. Segment offers customers a platform that helps organizations collect, clean, and control customer data. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Scholler from the New York Stock Exchange. Want some more consumer news back to Microsoft? It stopped a massive hacking operation, one the company says could have impacted the presidential election. The company announced today it took down the servers behind TrickBot. That's an enormous malware network that criminals were using to launch other cyber attacks, including a strain of highly potent ransomware. Microsoft said it obtained a federal court order to disable the IP addresses associated with TrickBot servers and worked with telecom providers around the world to stamp out that network. After weeks of delays, Apple expected to introduce a new line of iPhones tomorrow. Multiple reports indicate Apple is going to unveil four new iPhones. They got small sizes all the way up to large sizes in their screens. The biggest is 6.7 inches. That's the largest screen yet from Apple. The invitation to virtual event uses the phrase high speed, which hints that the new models will take advantage of emerging, emerging 5G wireless networks. There's no word yet on pricing for the new models being unveiled Tuesday. Well, the coronavirus pandemic, as you know, has probably forever changed how we shop. A research firm has estimated e-commerce sales in the U.S. would increase to $710 billion this year. Globally, online sales are expected to rise more than 16 percent to nearly $4 trillion. Retailers with a large online presence like Amazon and Walmart are doing very well right now, while others that rely heavily on mall sales or they haven't fully adapted to online shopping they're facing extinction. Experts say the longer the pandemic goes on, it's more likely customers will stick to their new shopping habits, such as curbside pickup and home deliveries. Outside with live cam, yesterday was hot, but it involved yard mowing, football, and napping. So I have no, did we break a record yesterday? We did. I missed it because I was doing all that other stuff. We got up to 97, that was a record for the wow. day. I'm impressed, a lot of lawn to mow. 
toasty. It was toasty outside. <laughs> it was humid too. fun, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it was at least humid in the morning. We're losing some of the humidity now, which is great news. Frontal boundaries pushing through. We're getting some dry air starting to funnel in. And temperatures so far today up to 89, so still pretty toasty, but the numbers should level off a little bit. The average is 83, so we've been above average. Uh, average low is 61. Records are 99 and 41. We may get some temperatures in the 40s by this weekend, at least in the morning time. We're going to talk more about that forecast coming up. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the wind gusts across the state right now. We're getting some gusty winds off to our north, some gusts up around 20, 25 miles per hour. This behind a frontal boundary. We had sort of an initial wind shift this morning. Now we're getting uh, some of the stronger winds coming in behind the front. And that's kicking up some dust, too. We'll show you the visibility in just a second. But there may be a little bit of dust in the atmosphere today as uh, these winds pick up. Uh, the dew points really are falling off sharply behind this secondary push here. So right now we've still got dew points in the mid to upper 60s, but look at Kerrville dew point now in the low 40s, and that's what is headed our way here in San Antonio. And this will spread across all of South Texas as we go forward in time here. We'll fast forward to about midnight. There you go. We got dew points in the 40s for just about everybody, and so that's going to allow temperatures to drop off tomorrow morning. We should have some clear skies too. Locally gusts at about 16 miles per hour in Rock Springs, but that's all we're seeing at the moment. I do think we'll see a few more gusts throughout the afternoon, 15, maybe 20 miles per hour. A visibility, as we talked about, down a little bit. Places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg, some of that dust trying to work through. And so again, a little bit of haze possible, uh, but the cloud cover starting to shift away and uh, we should be mostly sunny by the afternoon. 88 degrees right now, humidity at 51% north northeasterly winds at about nine miles per hour. Temperatures 89 Rio Medina, 92 Castroville, 85 at Stinson. So there's some warm ratings out there. 83 comfort, but you zoom out some and that slightly cooler air is trying to work in from the north and west. 81 right now in Fredericksburg, 80. Injunction. There's like the visible satellite picture, and there are still some clouds working through. That's sort of that secondary push right there uh, that is coming through San Antonio. There's some clouds right along that, but behind it, clear skies. And this stretches all the way up towards Great Lakes. Uh, you see some rain up there around Chicago with this front that stretches back into Texas, but not a lot of rain out ahead of this. And we certainly could use some rain from this. We didn't get it. And uh, even our next front, we're not looking for a lot of rain with it. So it looks like this is. So going to be a dry stretch for us, which is unfortunate. Uh, you look at Tuesday, tomorrow, 88 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Looks pretty good. We'll see some drier air. Humidity does return on Wednesday, and it gets hot. 92, probably our hottest day here in the seven-day forecast. And then here comes the second front. So Thursday will be a transition day. We'll start off fairly warm, and then once this front moves through, and right now it's scheduled for Thursday afternoon, we'll see those temperatures tumble, drier air works in, and also it gets windy. We may see some advisory level winds by the time we get into Thursday evening, Thursday night into Friday morning. And then Friday looks fantastic. Mild conditions, 74 for a high and mostly sunny. And this is going to allow for a really nice weekend too. Probably start off in the 40s Saturday morning and then uh, reach temperatures in the upper 70s, close to 80. Looks really good. 87 degrees by two o'clock today. That means temperatures may come down a little bit from where they are. But uh, topping out close to 89, mostly sunny skies throughout the rest of the afternoon and some breezy winds. Extended forecast, 88 tomorrow, 92 Wednesday, as we mentioned. There is an outside chance for shower once that front comes through Thursday night, but it's a low chance, otherwise windy and lower humidity as we go into the weekend. Guys. That's a serious Friday night football temperature. Right? Ooh, yeah, it's going to feel good. Mm. Can't wait. A hit Netflix series Tiger King continues to make headlines months after its debut. Why one of its stars now facing charges. That's coming up next in the spotlight. Plus, Gal Gadot is teaming up with the director of Wonder Woman once again for a different role. Details on the new film next.